so how was the video you know from Sal the the guy from the Khan Academy did the distributive property start to make sense I hope so um, what what Sal showed you is um, how you apply the distributive property using um, you saw he used the problem for and then in parentheses eight plus three right well so today we're going to use the distributive property. Um, we're using the greatest common factor with the distributive property. So let me show you how we do that. Do you recognize this problem? That is actually where we ended up. Um, I'm noticing I left my markers, but I can use these. Um, we ended up with 32 plus 12 at the very end. So. Um, I'm just going to write down the problem that Sal used with you because it's something you're familiar with. And um, it was over here, I'm going to put it right up here, 4 and then in parentheses times 8 plus 3, right? And you learned in that last video that you multiply 4 times 8 to get 32. And then 4 times 3, you're distributing the 4 to get 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to reconstruct this because you're going to be asked <laughs> to use the greatest common factor with the distributive property. So let's pretend we didn't know this, okay? Oh, let's keep that secret. Okay, it's in blue. Pretend you can't see it. That's, that's where we're trying to get. So we're, we've got 32 plus 12. First thing we need to do is we need to think about what, what is the greatest common factor of 32 and 12. So slide this over. Um, so yesterday I taught you about how we use the prime factorization to find the greatest common factor. So let's do that. Um, let's start with 32. Oh, oh. Start with the 3. Okay, 32. I'm going to use the tree method. Um, 8 times 4 equals 32. So now I'm going to break up 8 into 2 times 4. And I'll break up the 4 into 2 times 2. So I'm going to bring down the 2 because it's prime. Multiply that times 2 times 2. So now I'm breaking up the 4 into its 2 primes, 2 times 2. And then I'm going to bring down the other 2s. So the prime factorization of 32 is... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Do I get the right number? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 2. Okay, um, we're also going to look at the prime factorization of 12. So, 12, I bet this one you know really well. I'm going to move it down a little bit because we're going to compare the prime factorization of 32 and the prime factorization of 12. Let's see, I'll put it, oh, what color shall I use? I'm going to put it in green. And once we find it, we'll list it right there next to 32. Okay, so 12 can be broken into uh, 4 times 3, right? And then 4 will be broken into 2. Oh, I can't write this small. Times 2 times 3. I hope you can see it. I'm going to rewrite it in order from least to greatest right here, 2 times 2 times 3, okay? So we have the prime factorizations for 32 and for 12. And we did that because we want to find the greatest common factor of 32 and 12. You could have used another method, but since we recently learned this method, I want to give you more opportunities to practice it. So once we find the prime factorizations of the two numbers we're trying to find the greatest common factor for, we compare them and we circle, we identify what they have in common. So I see um, two twos here, I see two twos here. They share two twos. So to find the greatest common factor, we're gonna multiply the prime, the numbers in the prime factorization that they share in common. So in this case, we're gonna multiply two times two and four is our greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor is four. Okay, now let's go back. 
for this problem. Okay, if the greatest common factor is four, then we're gonna go backwards in a sense, and we're going to take out the four as a factor. Because we're gonna distribute it. You distributed it, you distributed it, that's hard to say. You distributed it just earlier when you watched Sal demonstrate that from the Khan Academy video. And now we're working backwards. So we're gonna take out that greatest common factor and put it here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the parentheses and the plus sign. So when we look at 32, if we take out four, the factor, so we're, we're dividing 32 by four, and we're left with eight. So that's because 32 divided by four equals eight. Okay, we do the same thing with 12. We're taking the four out. So, because it's the greatest common factor. So four, uh, 12 divided by four is three, right? 12 divided by four is three. And that's, that's essentially how it works. You went forwards with uh, Sal's video and now you're moving backwards with this video when we use the greatest common factor with the distributive property. Let's try one more problem. So I'm gonna slide all of these out of the way. I'm gonna move them down. There we go, okay. So let's try um, 12 and 20. I'm gonna write that as, an, as um, a problem to add together, uh, two numbers you add together. Um, so now we need to think about, well, what is the greatest common factor of 12 and 20? Do you know? I bet you do. Should I show you prime factorization? No, you know. Okay, what's the greatest common factor, everyone? You should have said four. Okay, greatest common factor is four. Okay, so again, it's four. So we're gonna take four out the greatest common factor. So let's start there with the parentheses. 12 divided by four, I'll do that down here, is equal to three, right? So it'll be three there. Um, 20 divided by four is equal to five. So five is there. Now, what I haven't done with you is to make this really obvious and uh, show you, well, what does this really equal, right? I should have done that. Um, 12 plus 20, what does 12 plus 20 equal? It equals 32. Well, let's check. If we were to solve, do what's in the parentheses first, not do the distributive property, three plus five equals eight, and eight times four also equals 32. So it works. Um, if we went back to the other problem that I gave you, uh, I know Sal did that with you, so you know what it total what it equals. I know you know it equals 44. Um, so that's probably why I didn't do that, right? Because you'd already done that. Okay. Um, there are some practice problems for you to for you to do in your math book. Um, and there's also some reading. My S has disappeared. So practice, the practice problems and the reading, it starts on um, page 22, and, um, but the problems are on page 23. Most of the reading is on page 23. You're gonna see another way, and they use a number line to show you why it works. So if this is still too abstract, take a look at page 22 and 23, and you'll see it applied using a number line. Okay, thanks you guys.